Welcome back. I'm Phil Yeager, Computer Networking Instructor at Dunwoody College of Technology. In the past two segments, we've talked about the physical and data link layer, the network layer, and the transport layer. In this session, we're going to talk about the last three layers, the session layer, the presentation layer, and the application layer. In most models, except for the OSI model, these three layers are combined into one. But in the OSI model, they broke them out. And depending on who you're talking to, for good reason. So we're going to start with layer five, the session layer. And from my experience in the classroom, that's probably, for some reason, that's one of the hardest ones for students to understand. The session layer actually is not that difficult. Once again, it's logical, just like all the rest of the layers are. And notice in the PDUs, it, they're all, all three are classified as data. The fifth layer, the session layer, is a connection management layer. In short, it starts, stops, and maintains logical sessions. What do I mean by that? Let's use RDP as an example, remote desktop. When you start an RDP session, it's working at the layer five because that's a logical connection between you and the computer that you're remoting into. The session layer, um, also offers full duplex, um, half duplex, and simplex operation, and establishes a checking point for adjournment and termination and restart procedures. Three of the protocols that have been found, or the first one is NetBIOS. The second one is LDAP, or Lightweight Directory Access Protocol. And the third is Remote Procedure Call. We all know LDAP from the use of things like Active Directory. Um, over at the University of Minnesota, they actually deal with, if you will, the grandfather of LDAP, the X500 protocol. The presentation layer really is what it says it is. It's logical and it's PDU is data. It does formatting and numbering. Anybody who has ever sent an email that has more than just text in it uses MIME. MIME is what takes pictures, music, whatever, and it turns it into a text-based format so the email can be sent. And then, of course, MIME reconstructs it on the receiving computer. <clears throat> we all know ASCII, because when we type letters on the keyboard, it types it into an ASCII code that the computer understands. Obviously, we understand A, B, C. The computer does not. It understands zeros and ones. So when you type in A, it puts in the proper zeros and ones for the, the machine to understand. And I threw up Setic up here just because it's an old, it's not used very much anymore unless you're using very old IBM machines because it was a creation of IBM. ASCII is the ruler. And then if you notice the other ones, MPEG, JPEG, GIF, TIFF, MIDI, um, I'm not a bu big musician anymore, uh, but I know a lot, some of my musician friends, they use MIDI for recording and stuff like that. The others, if you're using MPEG, uh, such as MPEG-4, you're watching QuickTime. JPEGs are small pictures, GIFs, TIFFs. They're just small pictures. Uh, you can also put bitmap up there and a whole bunch more. Then last but not least is the application layer. Now, as I said in the uh, first segment, don't confuse application with programs or software. That's not what this is about. What, when you talk about applications such as Microsoft Office products or whatnot, email, web browsers, you're up here above the application layer. 
Once again, it's logical, and the PDU is data. But here we're dealing with client servers. <clears throat> Domain and email, OK? These are the addresses that we use, such as www.net.com, which would be a web address, or you at net.com, which would be an email address. One of the things to keep in mind when you see things like this, you will never see a web address with an at sign in it, because that's specific for email. Domains, um, there are many of them. Um, pretty much every, especially large company, has domains. Um, many of you may not realize you're um, sending an email or logging on to a, a domain, but such as NBC.com, that's a domain name. Um, Dunwoody.edu is a domain name. Dunwoody is our domain. And at the protocol level, there are literally thousands of protocols. I've just put a few of the really big ones up here to show you, such as DHCP, or Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, DNS, Domain Name System. DNS uses these addresses to understand where to send um, your email or your web um, um, uh, call. Um, DNS also uses fully qualified domain names, uh, which we're not here to talk about that at this point. Just be aware of that. Then I put up the three different um, email systems, SMTP or Simple Mail Transport Protocol, POP3, uh, Post Office Protocol, and IMAP. Um, POP3 seems to be going away a little bit because of IMAP. Um, IMAP, uh, if anybody uses Gmail, Yahoo.com, uh, Hotmail, those are IMAP forms. POP would be if you're using um, something like Outlook or Outlook Express on your home computer and you're connecting to your ISP's mail servers. And then, of course, SMTP sends email everywhere. I also put RDP, RD, RDP sorry, uh, Remote Desktop Procedure. That's the one we talked about at the session layer. And Telnet is an old and useful um, program for uh, getting into people's systems. Um, if you take my security class, we'll show you how to play with that. And then the Who Is. The Who Is is kind of an interesting one. Um, if you need to find out who actually owns the domain, what their associated IP addresses are, you can use to who is. Um, I use uh, network solutions quite often for their who is. Uh, it's built into program, uh, operating systems like Unix. Uh, for Windows, you have to download the program. So once again, these three really work together in some uh, models they're actually all considered under one. So in the next segment, I'm going to come back and just kind of recap this whole thing, uh, not only the OSI model, but the other um, two models. <laughs>